welcome to the New Jersey Institute of Technology's webinar uh, offering an overview of our uh, new online Master of Business Administration programs. Uh, my name is Kate Williams. I am the enrollment advisor for the online MBA options as well as the online graduate certificate options offered through NGIT School of Management. This uh, session is meant to provide uh, information on um, the program in general, NJIT's background. Uh, we will also be introducing one of our um, uh, professors in the program as well as um, going over who uh, would be an ideal candidate uh, for the programs that we offer now online. The agenda that you see there just bullets out what we'll be covering during the next 15 minutes or so. Um, again, we're just this is a, meant to be an informational overview covering um, the School of Management and NJIT, the MBA program, um, who is a good fit. Uh, what our students in the past with the campus programs have done with their degrees and how to contact me uh, if this sounds like it would be a program that would fit what you're looking for moving forward. Let's go ahead and get started. Just to introduce myself, again, my name is Kate Williams. I am the enrollment advisor that works with the School of Management for the MBA in Finance marketing and management information systems all online, as well as the graduate certificates in management essentials and management of technology. My contact information is right there. Um, it will come again at the end of the presentation in case you need to get in touch with me. Um, but I am the one that works with every student that comes into the program and helps you with questions on admission, um, program information, financial aid, and the application process as well. Just to go over a couple points regarding NJIT in case you're not familiar with the school. Um, NJIT is one of the nation's leading public technology universities located in Newark, New Jersey. Um, we, have, um, we were founded in 1881. And we are the largest and oldest business incubator pro we have the, the largest and oldest in business incubator program in the state of New Jersey. Um, that really uh, pushes startup technology companies in bringing their businesses into the marketplace. Um, all undergraduate, this is very important, all undergraduate and graduate programs within the School of Management, online and on campus, are accredited by the Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business, or AACSB. And if you're looking into business programs, this is extremely important. Many employers may not reimburse your tuition, um, or some may not even recognize the master's degree in business um, if it's not AACSB accredited, which is considered actually one of the top accrediting bodies for business programs in the nation. Um, also, if you ever wish down the road to maybe pursue a PhD program, um, then it's very important that your master's in business administration um, hold that accreditation behind the degree so you can continue on with your studies in the future. Um, the primary difference between NJIT's MBA programs and other schools' MBA programs is our, the way that we embrace technology within the business um, world. Um, these days, business is global. Um, there's a lot of um, technology involved in day-to-day -day business operations, and what we do is we bring that into your studies, whether it's economics, finance, marketing, um, or uh, information systems courses, you're going to be seeing how technology plays a role in business. So that's really an important part to note there about our School of Management courses. To give you a quick overview of the MBA in general, and this is the online MBA, we have three specializations available. Uh, we do offer management information systems, finance and marketing. Um, we do, um, again, integrate technology into business and management. Um, so the curriculum does uh, incorporate a little bit more of the technology than you would see in most other um, business courses elsewhere. We do have a, a wonderful experienced faculty. Um, they have backgrounds in business and technology, um, lots of expertise in their fields, and they bring that to the classroom to um, share with you as a student. The structure of the program, pretty straightforward. Um, it's a 48 credit comprehensive MBA. Uh, so you do receive your core 30 credits plus a concentration area in one of the three areas listed above. And you finish off 
up with uh, capstone research courses at the end. Um, we do start in spring, summer, and fall, so there's a lot of flexibility as far as start dates for all of our new students coming in. Okay, what I'd like to do right now is introduce um, one of our wonderful professors from the finance department, Dr. Michael Ehrlich. Um, I would like to turn it over to him so he can give you some insight from a professor's perspective on the online MBA specifically um, in finance. Dr. Ehrlich? Thank you, Kate. Thank you. Um, so uh, my name is Mike Ehrlich, and uh, I uh, went to Yale as an undergraduate in Princeton is got, was where I got my PhD, but uh, my career actually started off in business. I actually started uh, working on Wall Street for about 15 years. I was a, a securities trader, a trading desk manager, business unit manager. I actually ended my career on Wall Street after about 15 years as a senior managing director running the global emerging market fixed income franchise for Bear Stearns. Um, so, you know, so I have a lot of uh, big company experience. But then I went and started a small company. I actually started a small technology company uh, with my wife. We uh, grew very rapidly. We got up to about uh, 28 employees before we, um, uh, before, well, before uh, 2001, 2002, and uh, we had a bit of a downturn. We sh uh, shrank back down. Uh, then I rebuilt the company, I sold that in 2007, um, is when I came to NGIT. So, um, so I, I, I really like uh, working here. My, uh, I get to work on all sorts of interesting research projects. Uh, my area is financial markets and institutions, and I particularly focus on market failures. And so it's been kind of a good couple of years for market failures, all things considered. Uh, but I also spend a lot of time looking at the problems entrepreneurs face when they are trying to get early stage uh, funding from uh, angel investors. Um, so that's kind of a little bit of my background. Um, I do a lot of work uh, both uh, in the classroom and then outside of the classroom. The Enterprise Development Center that Kate mentioned is a fantastic learning lab with uh, over 95 high technology and life sciences companies all getting started right here on campus. It's a great place for you know, students to engage and, and a great place for us as researchers to get, uh, get a chance to uh, uh, work, with, uh, work with the young companies. So one of the questions I guess that I was asked is who's 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 good for this program? Um, and th the first thing I'd say is that uh, the NGIT uh, MBA is really uh, more technical than uh, your probably your typical NG M MBA, um, and really focuses more on some of the you know technology aspects of management. So coming in with strong technical skills uh, and wanting to learn about business management probably describes uh, most of our students. Uh, for many of our students, uh, they're looking for this opportunity to tra transition from being kind of a, a, a small t uh, you know, program manager or coder or uh, developer or, or kind of some other technical area into, into, into more senior management roles. So by getting an online MBA, basically this gives them kind of a broader basis, also helps to signal to their management that they're ambitious and they want to move forward, which also goes to the second point about improving their marketability, so that when you get this online MBA, um, it's a way to tell people, hey, I'm, I'm investing in myself, and maybe you, my current employer, should invest more in me, uh, maybe, maybe with a new raise or a new opportunity. Or if that's not possible, of course, it opens the door for new jobs and new opportunities at, at other firms as well. And for many of our, many of our uh, MBA students, uh, they're already in the workforce. They have experience. They know a lot. But what they know is kind of what they do, and the MBA gives them kind of a big picture understanding of the firm and gives them a chance to get an overview of kind of how the whole firm operates, not just kind of their narrow area. So sometimes they, they know what to do in a certain, certain situation, but sometimes with the MBA they now know why that's the right thing to do and kind of can generalize from that experience they've already, already gained. And we've had an awful lot of uh, students who've taken, you know, taken their technical backgrounds, learned something about business through the MBA program, and then gone off and launched their own tech-based businesses. And of course, you know, we're seeing more and more of that. That's a, there's a real opportunity in the marketplace uh, for, for new tech-based business. And of course, uh, you know, as I discussed, we have our own incubator here at NGIT, which is uh, an active place for people to you know, start, start new businesses. So kind of a lot of our students um, you know, have studied engineering or the sciences as undergraduates. Uh, which gives them excellent analytical and problem-solving skills. And those, those are very effective in the business world, um, in particular in careers in finance. And so we've had a lot of our students go on to uh, – so my area, particular area, is finance. And so, you know, so we've, and, I, and I know a lot of our students have gone on to very successful careers uh, following uh, NGIT and their MBA degrees uh, in finance. 
Wonderful, Dr. Ehrlich. And I'd also like to just add um, that just because um, this program does have such an emphasis on technology, um, if your de undergraduate degree wasn't necessarily in technology, that would not necessarily eliminate you as a candidate for the program. Um, what's really important for those who don't have a tech background is their appreciation for the relationship um, of technology and business. So if you do work in an industry where maybe you're in a different kind of role within the company, um, you do want to move up. You do see how it's all working together with technology and business and, you know, that integration, and you want to learn more and add to your knowledge base, then this may also be a good fit for you. Um, we don't really have a prerequisite undergraduate degree. Um, we do have, obviously, admission requirements with, you know, GPAs and things like that, but the content of your undergraduate degree, if it was not in technology, would not necessarily um, eliminate you if you felt that the program content, the courses, the, the detail covered is still a good fit for you. Uh, would you agree, Dr. Ehrlich? Absolutely. That's an excellent point, Kate. Okay. And, you know, also, too, a good fit for this program would be somebody who really is self-motivated self-disciplined and needs the flexibility of the online model um, of, a, of a program. The online program never requires you to come to campus, although you still are working with the faculty on campus, such as Dr. Ehrlich um, and other wonderful professors there. You never have to go. So it does take somebody who doesn't need to be at a certain place at a certain time um, throughout the week it gives you the same content, the same academic rigor. The faculty have the same expectations of the students in the online format. It's just got that extra feature of a lot more flexibility where you can take the program with you. You work around your own schedule, but you're still held to the same academic standards as our campus students. So I just wanted to also make that a point as well. Um, moving on. Um, We'd like Dr. Ehrlich to cover some of the results that he's seen with our campus-based MBA in finance um, as the online program has only been around, you know, for, for a while. Um, we thought it would be great, and the course, since the courses are the same, um, for Dr. Ehrlich to cover um, what he has seen our prior students and graduates um, go on to do with their degrees. Sure, and, and, and my focus is really finance, so I'm going to really talk more about what our finance students have done, just because that's really probably what I, what I know best. Um, we are, of course, you know, physically located very near to Wall Street, and, um, and I would say that a lot of our students basically go on to mainline firms like Bank of New York or J.P. Morgan Chase or investment banks like Brown Brothers Harriman or you know, lots, of other, lots of other of the, of the traditional Wall Street firms which, which are looking for our students. And, and, and they particularly appreciate both the analytical skills uh, and the technology backgrounds that our students kind of the technology focus that our students bring because you know as you probably know this these Wall Street careers are now very high tech and uh, you know being able being comfortable with technology is really a, a big help um, but a lot of our students don't go to Wall Street in fact a lot of them go to uh, uh, UPS or Johnson and Johnson or other other you know more traditional firms uh, you know one of our one of my students uh, went to uh, GE Finance where he's now a director of uh, asset liability modeling and interest rate risk management which is a very senior position there um, so you know so some of them have done very well in these other alternative uh, more general firms and finally we have a lot of students that go off to you know, start their own businesses. So, uh, uh, you know, one student has started an architectural practice. Uh, you know, another is now CEO of her own environmental services firm. Uh, I'd say it's not at all uncommon for students to kind of, you know, feel that they've really now developed, they have an expertise already, but they now develop some more business skills that allow them to go out into the marketplace and figure out what their product market fit is and how to be successful as entrepreneurs. Uh, so, you know, so we've seen lots of different ways for people to be, students to be successful, and these are just a few examples. Wonderful. And, and again, um, just to remind everyone, we do have other concentrations, including management information systems and uh, marketing. And, you know, although the majority of the courses in the MBA are um, the same across the board in the core courses, that concentration at the tail end of your program really rounds out what you did with your business side 
and take it to a specific area that really is going to benefit your career and move you in the right direction moving forward. So we have a nice variety of concentrations um, for a variety of professionals. Um, and I, I just wanted to, again, thank Dr. Ehrlich for um, sharing his insights specific to the finance, but it does also help everyone from all the concentrations um, really get a, a faculty member's insight as far as you know what the program's about and who who would be a good fit. So I really do appreciate um, your input, Dr. Ehrlich. Well, happy to help. Well, finally, I guess we're just going to wrap things up. Um, again, if you have questions, concerns, um, if you wanted to get further information, course descriptions, admission requirements. That's what I'm here for. So um, my number is at the top, 877-615-9842. And do enter my extension, so you ring directly through to my desk. It's 5185. Um, my email address is right there underneath. Um, feel free, sometimes just popping off a quick email uh, with a question. I'll get back to you right away. Sometimes it's the easier way for you to do things if you don't feel like getting on the phone and, and, and calling in. I'm more than happy to answer any questions I receive. Um, from any of our candidates, um, please feel free to uh, get in contact me, uh, with me if you'd like to review any of the information that we've covered here or further information on any of the programs. You can call or email me. Um, I'll help you with the application checklist if you're, if you're interested in applying. It's a very streamlined process. I can help you with the admission requirements as well so we can go through all your, your, um, your academic history. Um, requesting transcripts, I'm, I'm a huge advocate of helping my students get them quickly. I can send you links and help you find them. Um, also, if a GMAT or GRE is required in your particular circumstance, and that would be a, um, we would have to do a case by case on that, um, then I can help you learn how to prepare and plan for the test if needed. And also, submitting um, financial aid paperwork, streamlined process there. I can get you everything you need, all the links. Um, so everything will be a simple process for you if you decide to pursue this path. So do get in contact with me, um, and I will be more than happy to assist you. Um, I believe that wraps up our presentation for today. Again, another special thank you to Dr. Ehrlich from the Finance Department, and uh, we look forward to speaking with you very, very soon. Thanks so much. <laughs>